Hi everyone, welcome to Facebook Live. Praise the Lord, we get to be together and study God's Word. Welcome! And we're going to be in 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19, so grab your Bible. And the topic is the difference between discipline and punishment. That is from God. Peter has a lot to say that's very applicable to our lives. So thanks again for joining and we would like you to just sit back and relax and receive God's word through this program. It's all about Jesus. Amen. So uh, go ahead and post your comments and uh, prayer requests as well. And definitely we'll be praying for you. I will be uh, leading in prayer and lifting up those concerns. And a lot of people will be praying for, for you and for that request. And uh, otherwise, just feel free to comment you know, with your likes and your interaction with one another or any feedback. Uh, I might not read them, but, you know, they're just great to have where you can share with one another. And, of course, I read them all later and pray over you and, and so forth. So a lot of you haven't uh, commented yet, so feel free to do that. And if not, if you want to remain anonymous, that's just fine. Receive God's word and be blessed. You know, you're God's child and he wants to bring you his peace and his love and his salvation right now to you. So let's pray for that. Father, thank you for this time. We dedicate Facebook Live to you, Lord. We just praise you for this opportunity, this privilege of being together. Meet every need in the house, Lord. And we promise to give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let me grab that guitar and let's sing a wonderful old hymn called Blessed Assurance. What a joy.
got to clap on that one. I got to put down my guitar pick. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Boy, what a great hymn, right? And um, that is so true. What a happy, happy song to sing from our hearts to the Lord. Here's one that I wrote a while back called The Living Sacrifice, taken from Romans 12, 1 and 2. So it's a song of dedication to the Lord to bring him everything in our lives to him, to serve him, to love him.
accused and condemned find mercy and grace for the wrongs we have done and the wrongs done to us were nailed there with him Well, it's time to pray. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for that place of Calvary. It's so nice to visit there, Lord, and to visit there often. It's where we need to be, Lord, to bring all of our sins and our sorrows and our hurts and our pain. We thank you for your blood that saves us, cleanses us, renews us, Lord, empowers us takes away all guilt and shame, that consuming feeling that we have always are doing something wrong, or that terrible deed that has been done to us, that it's hard for us to shed. Lord, we thank you for your divine power and strength through the blood of Jesus that reaches to every mountain that flows to every valley and Lord just takes in all, all of life, brings about that beautiful reconciliation, Lord. Thank you for making us holy, making us pure. We know who we are. We're such sinners, but we know a wonderful place and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for what we understand about the gospel, that you died for us, Lord, that you rose again, that you so love the world that you came. Lord, we just dedicate our lives to you as that living sacrifice so we can have that beautiful, blessed assurance that comes from you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And we just want to lift up all the needs, Lord. We just kind of want to start on the, the global stage first and kind of come closer to home as we pray for the nations. We pray for our missionaries serving all over the world. Lord, sometimes we, we uh, you know, forget to pray about them, but not now, Lord. We're just praying for them and just blessing them and remind us to pray for them continually. Those missionaries we know, those missionaries that we uh, don't know, Lord, that the gospel will go out and the Great Commission will be fulfilled, Lord. And that you'll strengthen each and every one, Lord, to do your work. And just all the individuals and families serving you, Lord, foreign and domestic. All the missionary agencies and the Go Ministries and all the Go Missionaries that we are able to serve through Calvary Chapel Anaheim, Lord. We just thank you for them. We pray particularly for Mike Goudet, who's still in the hospital. Yes, audience, believe it or not. And... Uh, Lord, it's been about a month, Lord, or more now, and we just pray for Michael Goudet, missionary to Nicaragua at a hospital in Managua for COVID, 
and Lord, he's um, on the ventilator, and oh Jesus, we just really pray for him that you would strengthen his lungs, Lord. Everything else is fine, his vitals and all, but Lord, we pray for special healing for him, that he would be able to breathe on his own, Lord, and uh, you would just resurrect him, bring him out of that hospital, give him a testimony, and we pray for the finances for the uh, Central American Hospital there, Lord, and how how that works. They want the money up front, and it's such a stress, Lord, for his wife Jacqueline and the family, Lord, and we thank you for all the supporters and those from the U.S. and just everywhere that are just giving money, Lord, and thousands of dollars to pay for these hospital bills, and we pray you would bless all of these dear supporters, Lord, and we just thank you so much, Lord Jesus. Just comfort this family and the church family that Miguel serves, Lord, down there. And uh, for Jacqueline and the two boys, Samuel and William. Father, we just praise you and we just want to pray for this pandemic, Lord, that you would just heal, Lord God, those who are sick. We pray for that vaccine, Lord, to be uh, discovered, created, uh, tested. And then, Lord, to be able to go out to all of us, Lord, in the nation, throughout the world. And Lord God, until then, we just really pray for protection for all of us and how it's just changed the world and our work and our children's schooling and our or just everyday life and shopping and restaurants and uh, decisions and cancellation of plans and travel and so forth and so on. Lord, it's just beyond huge but we pray that you would use it for your glory, Father. We just pray, Lord God, that we would all just be able to be flexible and how to how to do things and, and how to work around things and, and just also the, the patience for things to play out, Lord, and to have this new normal to come into it, Lord Jesus, because it's just been so long now, Lord. We just pray that we're getting along with it, Father, and just learning the good that can come out of it in so many ways, Lord Jesus. And that we can encourage people everywhere we go with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bring the good news. We pray for our country. We pray for the United States. We pray for election. Lord, we pray against strife and division. We pray the right person would be put into office, Lord God, for uh, president and as well as all the way down to the uh, state concerns and and. Uh, Congress and so forth, Lord, we just ask for all these propositions and we pray, Lord, against evil uh, legislation, uh, deceiving legislation that looks like something else. We pray for truth. We pray, Lord, also for Christians to, to vote, Lord God, and to do their best, Lord, no matter how they feel, Lord, knowing that it's just such a privilege to vote and we can go out and do that and really uh, bring forth our Christian values by so doing. So, Lord, help us, even if we're not into it. We pray for those who are just not into it this year because they're just so tired with everything else. Lord, that they would be into it and that they would at least say a prayer like we're praying for our country right now, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray against strife. We pray against all the stuff going on in our cities and, and so forth and so on, Lord God. We just thank you so much for, for the peace that we can have in Christ. And we pray for unity. But we know we've got to come to the cross first, come back to the Lord, and we just pray that we will, Lord, that we will rededicate our lives to you as a nation, Lord God, and to embrace Christ and the Bible once again, Lord. We pray for the right person to be put into that open seat in our Supreme Court, Lord, and guide those hearings right now, we pray. And uh, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we just want to come down now into our particular requests. We thank you for uh, uh, Donna. She's had a hard time posting, but I see you, Donna, on there right now as I'm kind of just, you know, glancing at the Facebook post. So praise the Lord. Something happened. You told me at church this morning that you're having a hard time posting. So uh, she communicated with me um, otherwise. I just want to, you know, read it. And she said, just before the program, hi, Louie, not sure if I'll be able to post on Facebook. So I'd like to pray for my niece, uh, Secho. Hope I'm saying that right. My niece owns a party business, and when COVID hit, she lost her business overnight. 
she was able to collect unemployment, but she just discovered that $2,300 was stolen off of the uh, B of A card EDD loads money on too. Please pray she is able to get her money back. She also is supposed to have elective surgery, but it's been postponed twice now because she's anemic. She's taking shots for that, but her levels are still too low. Thanks. So everyone, let's pray for uh, Donna's niece, Sachel. Father, we bring her up to you, and uh, we pray that you would help her, Lord Jesus, uh, to correct this banking situation and the money that's not going into her, her account through the unemployment, that it would be rectified, Lord, as she contacts uh, Bank of America and and um, the representatives there would be helpful and to be able to uh, discover this problem and to get that money back into her account, Lord, so she can pay her bills and do what she needs to do. So we thank you, Father, for that. And we also pray for the surgery she needs, Lord. Um, but she's anemic, and so she's taking those shots and all, but she's not at those levels. So I pray, Lord, just for all that she needs, just more iron and and just help her through um, you know, the diet and through the medicine that she's taking and so forth, Lord, that she would come up to those surgical level, levels and she could have that surgery, Lord Jesus. So until then, be with her and the dis discomfort and the pain and everything that is associated with what she is going through. We thank you, Father. So Lord, we just now uh, praise you for this opportunity to study your word and we pray you'd bless it, Lord God. And we just thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So if I missed your prayer request because it was posted and I didn't see it, you know, during the program, um, then we definitely want to let you know that others are praying and that I'm praying for you. And we'll continue to pray throughout the week. You know, this is a really cool thing. You know, we're a little uh, a family, a little kind of like a little church Bible study, aren't we? Uh, in the old days, we used to have little home Bible studies. Guess what? This is a home Bible study. And, um, you know, I'm right here out of my own uh, home office. So um, I guess it's a home Bible study. So thanks for joining me uh, at your home. And so at this time, we want to study uh, God's Word. And let's turn to 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19 and I got my Bible right over here so let me grab it and it's 1st Peter 4 17 through 19 and if you just came in we announced the topic uh, at the beginning the difference between discipline and punishment and uh, this is really interesting you know, to, to study. And uh, it's insightful to, um, you know, come into the, the reason to explain all this, but also the personal application, as we know, uh, is a lot more than we would ever think. You know how it is when you first start a Bible study and hear the topic and you kind of wonder like, I wonder if that's relevant, you know, to me and what I'm going through. But the Holy Spirit makes it relevant. Amen. Isn't that true? You know, and uh, sometimes we're just really pleasantly su surprised uh, once we hear a topic and go, oh, I don't know if I'm going to really enjoy this one. But uh, God's word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. So let's go ahead and um, read 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19. It says, and we'll close the chapter out. Uh, with this. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those uh, who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will, will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. Well, it's really cool how Peter is developing the uh, whole thing about trials and tribulations and uh, how to deal with persecution. 
that was really happening during his time, the time of his writing. And Nero, remember, was on uh, the seat of authority there in Rome. And he is the guy that was going to be, you know, persecuting all the Christians. It was just now starting. But uh, later on, there will be the burning of Rome and the blaming on the Christians and more and more persecution will break out and subsequent Caesars uh, will, um, you know, come and really try to exterminate um, Christianity. And that will go on for a couple hundred years until Christianity uh, through Constantine, Emperor Constantine, was legalized. But these are tough times now. They're entering into tougher times. And isn't that a good way of introduction for us too, to know that we are entering into more tougher times. I ask you, is it getting better out there as you read the news? Is it easier to be a Christian? See, isn't it just the opposite? So this is good. You know, we want to, uh, we don't like bad news. We want a, a brighter future, more of the Disney ending. <laughs> but uh, we've got to come to grips with this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Uh, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That's the words of Jesus. So verse 17, the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if, the, if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? So judgment. Judgment begins at the house of God. And this is talking about God's uh, discipline for us as a church and then individually for each and every Christian. God allows the refining discipline. This is what it's called. It's not punishment. It's discipline. It's different. Discipline uh, means to train. And God is training us through the hard times. It's hard to be trained through the good times because we're having such a great time, you know, and we're a little bit more softer, uh, less reliance upon the Lord, you know, and that kind of thing. God often allows believers uh, to go through uh, these trials and to make us more like Jesus and a more effective tool in his hand. So with that, why don't we bookmark it here and uh, we'll come back, of course, and we'll go over to Hebrews chapter 12. OK, so that's back to your left. And we're going to talk about the discipline of God. And it's, it's going to start with um, verse 5, Hebrews 12, 5. You ready? And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening or the discipline of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So for you note takers, that was Hebrews 12, 5 through 11, 5 through 11. And it's a good one to go back to. If you're like me, I like to jot some of these things down. And then um, I have a little uh, journal I bring with me to church along with my Bible. And I have my favorite pen. And when Pastor James is teaching, um, I like to write things down. And then later on, when I come home or, you know, the next day or whatever, I like to review my notes. 
and uh, kind of look these things up again because sometimes it goes by so fast, doesn't it? And it's like, wow, you know, where was that? And so if I jot it down, then I have uh, reference uh, to it. But here it is, the discipline of God. Um, and it's all good for us. The Lord loves those whom he disciplines, just like a father. A good father will discipline the child so they won't be a brat. Uh, we want to be a, a good child of God. Amen. And um, then it talks about in verse 11 that it's, it's not fun, you know, to be disciplined. And, you know, when you go through stuff and, um, you know, the Lord has to, is refining you or disciplining you and I, it doesn't feel good. You know, trials and tribulations and things that go wrong and, and hassles and all. It's like, Lord, why are you allowing this in my life? And then you read scriptures like this and go, oh, okay, I, I know why, Lord. You're just refining me. So, um, of course, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't have to feel good. But as long as we know the purpose, God loves me. Does God love me? Yes. Is he disciplining me? Yes. Did I do something wrong? You know, maybe not. Not necessarily. Just like Job, he was the most righteous man on the earth. But yet he went through all those trials. You might say, why, Pastor Louie? God wanted to make him a better man. We all stand in need of improvement. Amen? Yeah, we do. And nothing deepens a person and makes them more like the Lord and more wonderful and lovely and and more uh you know deep as a person and more attractive in nature than the person who has suffered who bear scars and you know just have a lot of experience of of things that they've gone through of troubles and and loss and setbacks and pushbacks all those things that you know, they didn't like and they cried in their pillow and they carried, you know, so much close to their, their heart that, you know, they've just felt like no one could really know it but them and the Lord. But see, God makes you a better person. And it says afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So yield yourself to the Lord. Give in. Instead of, you know, being stubborn and pushing away uh, the Lord's hand, you know, there's a good hand of the Lord. It says in Ezra, the good hand of the Lord is upon us. And you might feel like, well, gosh, it's kind of a hard hand right now, but it's a good hand. And if you really think about it, it's a nail scarred hand. And he loves you and he died for you and he has your best interest at stake. Oh, he, how much he loves you. And he's going to bring you through and afterward, afterward, I love that, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So let's not be stubborn. Let's accept what's going on and not try to push it away. Um, we can pray, you know, and seek the Lord and ask him to deliver us. But it's in his timing and in his way. And let us be able to be in it for the long term. Um, as God allows, or as short as he would allow. But it's up to God, isn't it? We don't try to squeeze out of our own problems or try to fix our own problems ourselves. So that's a little side, you know, Bible study. Let's go back. Um, we want to be faithful with the scripture where we're at here in 1 Peter 4, 17. So, Judgment then begins at the house of God. It begins with us. You know, God uh, puts us through the fire now. And the cool thing about that, brothers and sisters, is we won't have the fire later, the fires of hell. You know, God satisfied his wrath, his righteous anger against sin uh, through Jesus on the cross when he died for all of our sins and rose again. And the minute that we accept Jesus into our life, all of our sins are forgiven. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we are God's object of love and we are his sons and daughters. And so he knows we need improvement and growth and uh, he wants to use us on a grander scale. But we can't do that until we've had some things kind of go wrong and some testings and trials and tribulations. We learn to trust in the Lord and kind of get that uh, spiritual muscle to us so we can do our more heavy lifting for the kingdom. 
God's got great plans, uh, but we've got to kind of be ready for those plans. So think of it as, boy, the Lord must be getting me ready for something great because of all the trials and tribulations I am going through. I hope that really helps you with a positive uh, mental mindset with what I just said. So you can kind of just go, oh yeah, you know, praise the Lord. I'm glad I tuned into Pastor Louie tonight because, you know, I really needed to hear that um, because a positive mental uh, mindset is just so important, isn't it? And can just really, you know, defeat the enemy um, and uh, kind of better our attitude. And uh, we can just start praising the Lord more and just accepting, you know, God's plan and rejoicing in the Lord always, knowing that he's got it. And don't try to figure out you know, how long it's going to be or how intense it's going to be or, or so forth. You know, God has a way of escape for you in his perfect timing. Praise the Lord. So think about it this way, though, is the non-believer has all the heaven that they're ever going to get on this earth. And then come the eternal fires of punishment. Wow. Wow. So back to the flip side. Remember those old records? We would have those little um, 45s. There'd be side A and side B. It's the same record. Now let's turn it over again and think about us as believers. The only hell we're ever going to have is right here on earth through the fires of tribulation. Then when it's all over, we'll be in heaven with Jesus forever. Flip the 45 over and what do we have now playing on the record? It's just the opposite, unfortunately. Here's the dark part. We don't like side B. The non-believers have all the heaven right now here on earth, but all the hell afterwards. And it's for eternity. Oh, brothers and sisters. That was intentional. I'm just, it's kind of hitting me, so I'm taking my time and in sharing that because uh, sometimes with things like this with weightier matters it's good to slow down and let it settle in it's a heavy thought isn't it so with that in mind a couple things one is we trust the Lord for what we're going through knowing that it's only temporary amen and also we want to get the gospel out to the non-believers and let them know you know, that they can be with Jesus forever and not have to go through the fires of eternity. Oh, that's a good contemplation, brothers and sisters. Well, let's get back to us now. We are being taken care of by the Lord. He's cleaning house in the church and in our own personal lives. And every now and then the Lord will just do that. And we need it. You know, our houses get cluttered, don't they? And, you know, they make a joke about it. You should have people over every now and then just so you can clean your house and get it all spick and span. And otherwise, we kind of just allow things to go because it's like no one, no one comes over and, you know, sees my house. But then you throw a little party. It's like, oh, wow, I better, I better clean up. You know, Jesus twice cleaned the temple. Remember that at the beginning of his ministry, then at the very end. So the Lord will do that in our own hearts and lives. We need it. Judgment must begin at the house of God. These are the last days and we can't just be playing around at Christianity or our relationship with Christ. The Lord wants us to be all in and serious, you know, and walking with the Lord, carrying our cross and sharing our faith and, and growing and loving and so... The fires have to come, you know, uh, in order to have that happen. Ezekiel 9, 6 says, begin at my sanctuary, when it talks about how there was going to be judgment uh, back in the temple days for the Jews. I love it. Again, Ezekiel 9, 6, begin at my sanctuary. I wonder if that's what Peter had in mind when he said, judgment must begin at the house of God. Here's two scriptures in Daniel. Daniel eleven thirty five. And 12.10. Daniel 11.35 says, And some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them to 
Purify them and make them white until the time of the end, because it is still for the appointed time. So uh, some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, make them white. And then Daniel 12.10, Many shall be purified, made white, and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So there it is. There's the refining. Uh, it makes our garments more white. It makes us closer to Jesus and to be a pure vessel uh, for the Lord to use because he uses not perfect vessels, but he uses purified and holy vessels uh, for his cause. And so it goes on now in uh, 1 Peter 4. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? So when the gospel goes out, there are those who, who just disobey. And, you know, you just see it, especially just so many days before election. And, and we just see the great divide, don't we, uh, in, our, in our nation uh, when it comes to values. It just has never been so, so far to the right and so far to the left, you know, kind of thing with a big chasm in between. These truly are the, the last days when we see that spiritual moral polarity. That's what I like to call it, spiritual moral polarity. And you just go, really, this is what people believe and, and this is what certain Congress people uh, are saying and, and the people on the news and certain leaders. It's like, really? Man, it's just so liberal and what's going on? But, you know, uh, the Bible says that what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? We all have a choice. You know, God makes us hear the gospel. He starts with uh, our conscience, Romans 1, uh, creation, uh, Romans 1, our conscience, Romans chapter 2. And then each and every one of us has a day of salvation and a visitation from the Lord. And uh, so during those times, we want to not only hear the gospel, but to obey the gospel. If we turn Jesus away, there's going to be no chance. And there's no second chances once it's all over. You know, once we die, that is it. And so we want to make sure that we are ready for heaven now. I love uh, Simeon in the Bible. Once he saw Joseph and Mary and, and held the Christ child, he's, he basically said, you know, now I can just die and go to heaven uh, because I've seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord's Christ. And he just, that was his goal. So don't leave earth without Jesus. In verse 18, uh, here's a quote now from Proverbs 11.31. If the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the godly and the sinner appear? That's interesting, isn't it? This emphasizes God's uh, discipline, disciplinary demands on his children. If believers need earthly discipline from God, how much more will unbelievers receive it? If the righteous are barely saved only because of God's mercy, what chance have those who reject Christ? So that's what that verse is talking about. Uh, Peter is quoting from Proverbs, again, 1131. And now our last verse, verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God. I like this. Do you like it? When we suffer how? According to the will of God. And that is really, really cool to think about that, you know, when we suffer, it's going to be according to God's will. He allowed the trials and tribulations. You might say, well, the devil's all over me. And well, that's that might be true, you know, as far as the how we feel and like the devil is just beating us up. And but Paul says with his thorn in the flesh, God allowed the thorn in the flesh a messenger of Satan to buffet me. So I like to flip the coin and just see it as, you know, God's refining. Even though we kind of feel the enemy in there and, and uh, again, those setbacks and those, uh, those punches from the devil, you know. Well, we just uh, praise the Lord that God has a purpose and a plan behind it all. We suffer according to the will of God. You know, God allows trials and tribulations. You might say, well, well, God, I just, 
I just, I need a break. And that's really true. But God knows how much you can take, you know, and he does lighten it up, you know, when, when it is needed. And he, he, he just is so good at that. But then, you know, when the trials come, we just have to know that God is in control. We suffer according to the will of God. Something's going wrong in our lives. We just go, well, you know, I don't like this. You know, I wish I had more money. Um, I wish I was closer in relationship to that other uh, person. Um, I wish I had uh, uh, just a, a greater ministry. I wish I knew God's will more, you know, for my life. Um, whatever it might be, it might be a health concern that you're, you're going through. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 3, 2, that we were appointed to these tribulations. You know, there's an appointment and God knows what's good for us. They are tailor-made trials that fit us, not somebody else. So we don't look at other people and go, well, why aren't they going through it? They seem to be really having gravy right now. Well, that's their life. My life is my life. And God has a certain plan for me. And it's different for that person. Maybe their trials will come later. <laughs> and once, you know, their start stacking up, maybe I'll have mine, you know, delivered. God will deliver me and I'll be more lighter. You know, sometimes we just kind of trade our, our sorrows around and and that kind of thing. But God knows, doesn't he? So we suffer according to the will of God. And when you do that, what's the attitude is commit. Look at this word, commit. You commit your souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. This is so important. Now hang with me now, because I know we're towards the end of the Bible study. You might be getting a little sleepy from the day or something, but the word commit means to make a bank deposit. That's what I found out through my study this week. And so you're committing, you know, like money in the bank, you know, when you put money in the bank, that's pretty important, isn't it? It's like, wow, that's the bank's going to take care of that. And I'm going to get interest. You commit your situation to the Lord, that which you don't really understand. Um, but the key word is to accept the trials that God uh, allows to come into your life. Accept them. Don't fight. Don't fuss. Just say, Lord, I don't like this, but I, I need to sit down and have a talk with you. And Lord, I just want to let you know that how I feel. And um, I just want to just pray, Lord, that you just take charge of this right now and that you mellow me out. And I'm, you know, upset right now. And I need you, dear Father, to, uh, to bring me to that place of peace. Would you do that, Lord, in Jesus' name? And he will do that for you. And then you're committing your situation to the Lord. And then you kind of just spend some time, you know, marinating the situation, um, whatever it is, you know, take the time to pray, to, to get away, to get aside. Um, you know, we're always so busy, but, you know, it's just good to chop some things out so we can, you know, just go, you know, I just, I need to, to have perspective on this. I need to grab my Bible and, and my journal and pen or whatever. I need to just go be with the Lord and I need God to speak to me. I'm so confused and I don't know which end is up and what God's will is for me. And then as you do that, you know, your thoughts start settling. You start seeing your situation from a divine perspective. And then it really helps that you, the peace starts invading your life. And it's really, really cool. That, and then, then you go on, you know, and you know that God's got it, right? And uh, we don't give him a timeline. You know, he knows uh, the cry in the Bible is how long, O Lord, both in Psalms and Revelation and Revelation answers it. It says just a little while longer. How long, O Lord, will I have this problem? And then the divine answer is just a little while longer. I like that. So some people I've actually seen people give uh, timelines to the Lord. You know, now by this time, you know, next month on this date, um, if the Lord doesn't come through, then I'm going to. It's like, what? You know, don't put a timeline on things. The Bible says, wait upon the Lord and he will renew your strength and let your heart take courage in that and to let him work it out. And let's not uh, be fools, uh, be wise in our own eyes. 
trying to fix our problems and our solutions? Am I talking to someone? You know, I know it's really ministering to me, that's for sure. So commit your souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. So you just want to um, commit and then do good. Uh, you know, it like, reminds me of Jesus on the cross. Remember he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit in Luke 23, 46. That's the exact same word that Peter is using. And then I like 2 Timothy 1, 12. Uh, it says, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him against that day. And so we just commit our loved ones to the Lord. We commit our situation to the Lord. We commit this world to the Lord. We commit this pandemic to the Lord. We commit the election to the Lord. Pray, pray, pray. Get others to pray with you and uh, get your church praying and we'll see what God you know, we'll do. And so we commit and then it says we do good. We do good. So once we commit and kind of get that uh, monkey feeling off of our back, then we're committed to doing good. And we're not full of uh, angst any anymore. We're not just kind of, uh, you know, walking around all frustrated and, you know, just we have that sourpuss face like we're you know, the uh, chicken ready to lay, lay a, an egg or something like that. You know, God's kids are supposed to be joyful and, and to uh, have their problems, but to work through those problems as they commit it to the Lord and get God's peace. And, um, you know, in the world, everything has to be over and concluded before there's joy, but not for the believer we can have that right now. Amen. Still have our problems unresolved. And yet we're the happiest person in the neighborhood. And why is that? Because we've committed it to the Lord. It's yours, Lord. I cast all my cares upon you for you care for me. And we do good. And Jesus committed on the cross and he did good. Right? He died for us and he rose again. So good things happen when you commit your situation to the Lord. You do good. And then uh, it says, as to a faithful creator. That means he's faithful to always come through for us. The Bible says in Lamentations 3, Great is thy faithfulness. We serve a faithful God. He will never abandon us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Hebrews 13, 5. So God created us and he has our best interest at stake. He not only created us, he died for us. He rose again and he's right now our rock and our redeemer and our strength and all that we need him to be. Amen. All right. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this time to study your word, Lord. And we just pray about this difference between discipline and punishment. Lord God, we know that you, you don't punish your children. You discipline them. You train them, Lord God. And we thank you for that, Lord. That's what we do with our kids. We don't punish them for wrongdoing. We discipline them. We teach them and show them the way. So we thank you, Lord, for that difference. I pray that each and every one of us would be, have that sense of love from the Father through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that when things go wrong, that we wouldn't feel like you're mad at us, Lord, that you're punishing us. But instead, we know it's just you're training us through the hard times that we go through. And we just want to yield to that, Lord. Thank you that we have heaven and not hell. Thank you that this is the only fire of hell we're ever going to go through is here on this earth. And then, Lord, we're going to be with you. And there's going to be no more of this, no more of this tribulation and, and this pain and uncertainty and sorrow and and loneliness and and just the darkness lord and the confusion of this life we thank you lord that we'll be with you forever oh lord we just thank you for that hope and we just now want to commit our situation to you i pray for my brother i pray for my sister that you would help them lord to put it on the altar and to keep it there and not take it back lord and to do good as to a faithful creator Lord, knowing that you have created them for a purpose to shine for you. 
Lord, to be your witness here on earth and then take them home and be with you forever. And we thank you, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, your blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, God is good. I just love that Bible study. So go ahead and read ahead to uh, our last chapter. We're going to be in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5. Let's sing the uh, song that we sang, Blessed Assurance. And this is the chorus. Ready? next time it's every week and uh, also I post every day you know my shepherd sheep devotionals my thought shots and just different things to to feed the flock of God so come on over and see my Facebook kind of getting into Instagram too um, little by little uh, kind of building that up and uh, may the Lord just bless you and keep you and may you just have a wonderful wonderful and wonderful week in him in Jesus name Amen.